Okay, in this video, we are going to solve right triangles using some basic right triangle tricks. So we're going to be using sine, cosine, tangent, and we're also going to be using the calculator to um, figure out some values. So uh, let's get started. So right triangle trig. Uh, first, we're going to need a triangle. So let's draw one. I'm going to color code it a little bit. So we have an angle here that I'm going to call theta. So that's T-H-E-T-A, theta. Um, and relative to theta, each part of the triangle has a name. So uh, this blue segment here is opposite theta. So if you were standing in that corner or vertex of the triangle and you look across from you, um, you would see this side. So we call that the opposite side. Um, and we don't call it a cross because we're going to call the other side something else. Uh, so if you're standing there, there are two sides that are kind of next to you, right? There's the green side and the purple side. The purple side we're going to call adjacent. So we have an opposite side and adjacent side. And then the side in a right triangle that is opposite the right angle is always called the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse can never be the adjacent side. Um, so you want to keep track of that because that can help you figure out what the adjacent side is if you're ever confused about it. So from this, we have some relationships. So they are the trig functions, sine of theta, so sine of theta, by definition, is the side opposite of theta um, divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle. So we have sine of theta. So sine is a function. You take an angle measure and you plug it in, and it gives you a ratio. So the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And then there's two more we're going to talk about. Uh, so we have cosine of theta. So cosine of theta is, by definition, the adjacent side, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then there's one ratio that doesn't use the hypotenuse at all, and it's called tangent. And so the tangent of theta is going to be equal to opposite over adjacent. Um, so those are our ratios. And uh, sometimes we know the angle and we want to figure out the ratio. So in that case, our calculator can just kind of do it for us. Sometimes we know uh, the ratio and we want to know the angle. So when that's the case, we can actually use inverse trig functions. So for example, theta is equal to, so if sine of theta equals opposite over a hypotenuse, then theta is going to be the inverse sine of opposite over a hypotenuse. And then we can do that for all of them, right? So theta could be the inverse cosine of adjacent over hypotenuse. So those will give you for the same value of theta, or I should say in the same right triangle, those will give you the same result. Um, or we could do tangent. So theta is equal. So if tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, then theta is the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. So you have three choices for how to figure out theta. And it just depends on what you know in the given problem. Um, and we're going to do two examples so you can kind of see what's happening there. So a couple more things about this. Uh, first one, uh, most people that I know use uh, this, so uh, SOHCAHTOA, so S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, -A -A. Um, and I kind of color coded that, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Most people I know use that to remember uh, the trig functions. I've been doing trig for a really long time, and I still use that in my head when I'm working things out. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that you're going to do, so I'm just gonna come up with a, a generic trig function that I'm calling trig. So you do trig of an angle and it gives you a ratio. So uh, you could do the sine of like 35 degrees, it'll give you a ratio of the side opposite to the hypotenuse, uh, things like that. So we do trig functions of angles, they give us ratios. We do, I'm gonna make up another function here. Uh, we do inverse trig, so trig with that little negative one there is inverse trig of a ratio and that's going to give us an angle. So it's important you keep track of like what is the result of what you're doing um, because it, it can help you make sense of the problem. And then another thing that we frequently will end up using is actually the Pythagorean theorem. So in our right triangle, uh, opposite squared plus adjacent squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so let's do a problem and see how these things kind of work. So the problem is going to be, we want to solve the triangle uh, given to the right. So we have triangle ABC and then uh, the side opposite angle C is side C. So we use a lowercase letter for that. So lowercase C is going to be 41. 
and then uh, angle A is going to be 38 degrees, and we want to solve for all the missing parts, including some of the parts that are given, uh, which isn't really solving. So I'm going to call the side opposite angle A lowercase a. So this is really common. Capital letters for angles, lowercase letters for sides. And then the side opposite angle B, which is the hypotenuse, is going to be lowercase b. OK, so I look at the problem, and I think that I want to know what A is. right? So if I want to know what A is, I know uh, the angle that is opposite A, uh, which is 38 degrees. And I know the side that is adjacent to angle A, right? So I have an angle, uh, the side adjacent to the angle, and I want to know the side opposite the angle. So opposite and adjacent, that's a tangent problem. So I'm going to write that down. So the tangent of 38 degrees is opposite, which is just A, we don't know what that is, over adjacent, which is 41. So these problems always come down to this kind of relationship. I'm going to multiply through by 41 and get a is equal to 41 tangent of 38 degrees. Okay, so now what I want to do is get an approximation. So I want to say that a is approximately equal to. Well, I definitely need a calculator for this, so I'm going to go over to the calculator. But I kind of have a problem. Right now I'm in uh, radian mode. So you want to look at the top right and make sure that you're in degree mode because of the degree sign. So what I'll do, I'm going to press doc 7 for settings. Uh, do it. Whoa, okay, hold on. My calculator is not behaving very well. Let me escape, get out of here. Okay, uh, let me see again. Okay, doc seven, option two. And then I'm gonna arrow down and change from radian to degrees and press enter and press enter. Now in the top corner here it says DEG for degrees, and we're ready to go. Also, if you have a CX2, you can just uh, click here and it'll change. Um, but if you don't, you have to press Doc 72 and change it. So I'm ready to go. Uh, now I'm just gonna type it in. So it's 41. I need trig, right? So uh, this key right here below control, if you press it, a whole menu comes up and I'm looking to do tangent so you can see there's three functions we didn't even mention. There's a CSC, SEC, COT. Those are for a little later. So we're gonna do tangent and then uh, 38. And the calculator is in degree mode, so it knows that 38 is 38 degrees. And I'm press, uh, so if I press enter, something weird happens. So I press enter, kind of nothing happens. So what I wanna really do here is press control enter to get an approximate. And so that is our value. I'm gonna write it down to three decimal places. Um, so 32.033. Okay, now let's try to figure out another missing side. So uh, B, for example. So B is the hypotenuse. I still have the angle, and I still have the adjacent to the angle. So adjacent and hypotenuse. So I'm going to end up using cosine because it's um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's set that up. So the cosine of 38 is equal to... Um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so 41 over B. Uh, I'm going to multiply through by B to get B cosine 38 degrees is equal to 41, and then divide by cosine. So if you do enough of these problems, you'll be skipping that step and going straight from the setup to this. Honestly, if you do enough, you'll go right to this. Um, but now we need to get an approximation for this. So we're going to go back to our calculator, and we want to do... So I'm gonna do control division to get a fraction. 41 divided by, so you can press tab to get to the bottom of that, and then press the trig key, cosine of 38. I'm gonna put a decimal point this time, so it automatically gives me an approximation instead of the exact value. Uh, so I get 52.0297, and I'm gonna write that down to three decimal places, so there's some rounding here. 52.030. All right, and now what I want to do is summarize my answer, right? So I figured out what A is, figured out what B is. I actually didn't find angle C yet. I'm going to do that while I write my solutions. So the solutions. So you always want to do this after you solve the triangle. Like write down what A, what B, what C is, are, what those values are, um, and then the sides as well. So for uh, C, I'm going to do 90 minus 38. 
uh, because it's the other acute angle in the triangle. So 90 minus 38 is 52. And then uh, we will write down the sides that we know. All right, so that's like one pretty good example. I'm gonna do one more problem, uh, very similar, just so you can uh, have a little more practice. So we want to solve the triangle. Uh, in this case, we don't know any angles, right? We just know that the side opposite angle A is 19 and the side opposite angle B is 47. But that's also the hypotenuse because angle B is the right uh, angle in this triangle. So I'm gonna start off by finding uh, side C, I think. So uh, lowercase c there. It's one of the legs of a right triangle where I know the hypotenuse and the other leg. So I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. So C squared in this case is gonna be the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. So we have this and uh, you know we can we can work this out on a on calculator I suppose uh, I did that kind of ahead of time let me see uh, if I do 47 squared minus 19 squared gives me 1848 and then uh, I think I want to get a decimal approximation for that so I'm gonna do the square root so control this square root of this and control enter gives me 42.9884. I'm gonna round that to three decimal places. So approximately 42.988. Okay, and that's a side length, so I'm not gonna put a degree symbol there. Uh, now I need to find these two angles. So let's go back to the triangle. Uh, let's say I wanna find A. So for A, I know the side opposite, I know the hypotenuse, and I know opposite and hypotenuse um, that's going to be a sine problem. So the sine of angle A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And then what I want to do is I want to use that relationship that we found, right? So I know the sine of A is 19 over 47, which means that A is the inverse sine of 19 over 47. And at this point, uh, I'm going to use a calculator. So I'm going to do the inverse. So it's the trig button. And if you look, the second row in there is all the inverses. So uh, I'm gonna pick inverse sine, uh, control division to get a template, 19, press tab, 47, and then uh, control enter to get a decimal. So 23.845, and that's in degrees. Okay, let's do, uh, the other thing, right? We already know angle B is 90, that was given, so we have to find C. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna subtract from 90, right? I could do 90 minus what I just got for A. The problem is if I got A wrong, then I'm guaranteed to get C wrong. Um, and if I find C in a different way, I can then uh, add what I got for A and C together and see if it's 90 and it's like a check on my work. So what I'm gonna do is try to use given information. So I wanna figure out what C is. I actually know the side adjacent to C is 19. Um, and the hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse. So I have an adjacent side and the hypotenuse, that's a cosine situation. So I'm gonna use cosine for this. So the cosine of C is um, adjacent, which is 19, and then divided by 47, which is the hypotenuse. And we can say then that C is the inverse cosine of 19 over 47. And then we can use a calculator again. So I'm gonna do the trig button, Go to inverse cosine, control division for a template, a fraction template, 19, tab to get to the bottom, 47, and control enter. So 66.156. This actually brings up an interesting thing. Um, because you have to round as you write your answers, it's possible that the two angles you find aren't gonna add up perfectly to 90. So in this case, they're not gonna add perfectly to 90. Um, it's like 90.001. Um, and that's just from rounding. So that'll happen a lot. Um, you just have to be aware of that. Doesn't mean you're getting it wrong. Um, so we have this and uh, I think we know everything, right? So let's uh, summarize our answers. So we got solutions and then uh, I'm just gonna list them all out. I won't make you watch that. So we have this um, and that's how can, we can do it. So it's like uh, some basic trig you have to get very good at this, practice it a lot, because it's gonna be a part of all kinds of problems that you end up solving. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.